Hey there folks, this is Greeny XI, welcoming you right back to Let's Play Yumini Kill. This is episode 54. Um, in the last episode, we actually finished off the third question arc, or the third arc in general. And today we're going to be kicking off the fourth arc, which um, is the final question arc. And then there will be four answer arcs, which we'll get around to, <laughs> you know, eventually. We're getting it. Um, so yeah, episode 54. If you haven't watched or played the first three arcs, you're going to be completely clueless with what's coming. Because all these stories, they sort of follow on completely. Um, it's one big story, essentially. So, should we get going? Should we see how they deal with with it this time. Episode 4, Alliance of the Golden Witch. Good morning. How shocking that you haven't been forced into surrender even now. By this point, even I am forced to expect a lot from you. Not all the game takes place on the board. How about taking a little peek at the outside this time around? They say that if you know your enemy, you need not fight a hundred battles. The difficulty level depends on you. The manner in which you fought up until now will greatly influence the difficulty of this game. So, okay. <laughs> I've come to expect a lot of the sort of Things that are said in this game to be, you know, you know, just misleading stuff. Um, so I'm actually ignoring a little bit of that, but yeah, it looks like it's gonna be outside the board a lot this time. Let's get going. It's been so long. <laughs> yeah, it's obviously fictional. I get that. I get that. We were introduced to a new character last time, Angie, Battler's sister. Will she be here from the start this time? Nineteen eighty-six, October fourth. Here it comes. Um, epic music just goes wonky. <laughs> yeah, Stop with him. Okay. Come on, that text. You know you want to. There it is. You're right, Battlecon. We're already on the ground. You can't fall any further than that. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't like traveling, does he? Fall, fall. Ha <laughs> ha. God. Even the little girl's taking the piss out of him. In the lobby of the Najima airport, Maria dashed around in excitement. Battler's uproar on the plane must have been hilarious. Hey, Maria. Get that out. I'm sorry, Battler Gun. Please don't take it badly. What a pathetic guy you are. <laughs> Even with that huge body, you still can't handle vehicles. Ah, shut up. <laughs> All humans have one or two things they can't handle. Yeah. Battler Gun, why don't you come with your aunt on an overseas trip sometime soon? How about Europe? I'm sure you could manage a half-day trip on a plane. <laughs> Stop it, mother. Battlecon's dislike for vehicles is probably genetic. Oh, you mean Asumu-san? For some reason, she just couldn't handle vehicles. Pretty much anything other than a bicycle or a car. Whenever we tried to go far away, that woman was so annoying with the Not this, not that. I'm scared, I'm scared. Fall, fall. Gah, gah. <laughs> Children tend to learn their things their parents can't handle are dangerous. Uh, I'm sure Battlecon saw Asumo-san doing something like that and learned that vehicles are scary. Hmm. So it's Asumo-san's genes then, is it? Looks like we're meeting everyone straight away this time, which is quite interesting. Or well, a lot of them, anyway. Who knows? Those would be some pretty annoying genes. That's enough talking about Asumo. Right now, you're the one who's here, right? You're right. Sorry. Hey, the cars are here. Exactly three of them. Get in, get in. Fall, fall. <laughs> Where's the parachute? Where's the parachute? <laughs> Poor Butler. <laughs> Why, you little... Hold on, hold on. Stop right there. I'll sentence you to the little girl tickle punishment. Oh, that don't sound good. <laughs> Being in high spirits is such a wonderful thing. Without Batlacon and Maria-chan, the atmosphere in that plane would have been pretty grim. Thanks. I'll assume you mean that literally. Hey, brats! <laughs> the taxi's here. <laughs> you can play around later. Ooh, ooh. Taxi, taxi. I'm getting in first. Hey. Maria, and you too, Battlecon. Stop fooling around. You'll bump into someone. The tone of Aunt Rosa's voice grew a little frightening. When even Battler realised they were fooling around a bit too much, just as expected, he bumped into someone. <laughs> and he's huge as well. Oh, sorry. 
Balcon, you guys are going in that car. They're keeping them waiting. After George urged him to hurry on, Battler apologised to the person he had bumped into and ran up to his parents, who were telling him to come quickly. With a clunking sound, the doors on the three taxis were shut one after another and they departed for the harbour. As their taxis dashed away, the entire world grew suddenly dull and slowed to a halt. Why? Took a while inserting the music then, didn't it? The voices, the wind, and even sound. All of it stopped, and all the people who were trying to move froze like the instant someone took a, uh, takes a photo. Coming to a halt. People and machines and clock hands, even the dust dancing in the wind, were frozen. Some people who were walking froze with one leg still in the air. Scraps of paper dancing in the wind were pinned in mid-air, frozen in place. Then, among the shadows standing still in this unmoving world, a single one stirred. Aha! Angie. It was a girl. The girl Battler had just bumped into. Though she had moved, it was a truly subtle thing. Her gaze dropped, her shoulders lowered a minuscule amount, and she sighed. That was all. In a normal world, that probably wouldn't even be taken as movement. But in this still world, it looked very out of place. Then, something else moved. It was a black cat wandering around the shadows near the taxi rank. It came up right behind the girl, and leisurely changed its form into that of a human. Oh, big castle. This was no cat. It was a witch. Of course, the girl was also a witch. As the witch stood still, her gaze still downwards, she muttered, I can't. Stop everyone from going to Rockinjima, can I? You cannot. On October 4th, 1986, you were not here. If I were, would stopping everyone really have been possible? Hmm, can't imagine what a six-year-old girl could do to make them turn back. Still, that's right. If you were in this place, the probability wouldn't have been zero. Whenever there's a probability greater than zero, I can seek out a miracle. If I hadn't been sick, and they hadn't left me behind. With her head facing downwards, the witch tightened her fists. They were trembling very slightly. He was sick in bed starting October 3rd, 1986, and Beto's game board is sealed off starting October the 4th. You are not given a chance to avoid getting sick. In other words, it would normally be absolutely impossible for you to enter her game board. Thanks for being patronising. <laughs> I know that. I know that just seeing father, mother, and only Chan healthy like this, even that alone, is a spectacular miracle. Angie had tried to stand in the way of her family, attempted to stop them from leaving the airport and heading towards Rockinjima. However, it was impossible for her to exist in October 4th, 1986, so she couldn't do it. Even though her brother had only bumped into her and apologised, even though he hadn't realised she was his own little sister, it had been such a miracle that she could cry. Sorry about the sarcasm. I won't waste the miracle you've given me. I'm glad to hear it. Come, let's go with them. To Rakanjima. All the pieces are already gathered. This curtain will open on the fourth game. By this time, Beto and, Be Beto and Battler will already be seated. To Rakanjima. To where my... No. To where everyone's fates changed. The Rakanjima of October 4th, 1986. What happened on that day? I'll expose it. I'll learn what it is and I'll bring them back. As she stood there with her fists still clenched, she surely turned her face up to the heavens. A single teardrop from the depths of her eyes dripped down into the air. And when time started moving again, the two witches' figures were swallowed up by a blowing gale and erased in an, in in an instant. Um. There it is. Wow.
What are we looking at here? Good morning, my lady. My, my, you do appear to be in a good mood. What a pleasant awakening you seem to have had. What do you mean, pleasant awakening? I was so excited I couldn't sleep a wink. After all, the curtain's rising on the fun, fun fourth game. It seemed that she truly had been so excited that she hadn't gotten any sleep. Did she know? Did she show absolutely no signs of lack in sleep because she was young, or because she had the mind of a little kid? Ronave chose not to say that aloud, and laughed, poo -coo -coo, instead. I really ran the battle into the ground last time. Ah, the look on his face when he was like, You tricked me! That was so pathetic. Even so, is that guy still feeling down? Feeling down, you say? Hmm, that's right. That man's a bit too trusting for his age, isn't he? Indeed. Although you could call that his charm. Mm. Ain't it the truth? Ain't it the truth? Mm. Speaking of which, didn't he totally fall for the last uh, that one last time? Yes, totally and splendidly. He violated the purity of one never deceived since the time of his birth, as well as his rosebud-like innocence, all to your heart's content. Even the joy of dashing across a field covered with beautiful new snow on a winter morning and trampling it completely wouldn't even begin to compare. Didn't you take back the Sama's innocent heart? And quite thrillingly, splendidly, atrociously, mercilessly, and unculturedly go just a little too far? And you insulted him to the highest degree, enough to make one uneasy. Most people would be crushed after something like that. So much so, they wouldn't want to see your face ever again. I know that much. I also thought that if he was too disheartened to join us at the table, even though the fourth game is finally starting, that would be such a pain. So I came to you, thinking that it would be e uh, better to prepare a countermeasure for that case beforehand. Uh-huh. Hmm. In that case, perhaps it really would be best to prepare such a countermeasure. I'm sad to say that your North Wind and Sun strategy gave Battle Summer quite a shock. <laughs> a shock, you say? How bad of one? Beto lowered her voice slightly, asking timidly. One of they followed suit and lowered his voice in the same way. In truth, he has been crouching and clutching at his knees for some time now. I spoke to him several times, but he did not answer. I also brought him some food, but he never even touched it. That's troublesome. Is he really feeling that down? It's only natural. After all, you thoroughly... Beat him down, my lady. That would make most people start to distrust humans. Distrust of humans? How convenient. Let him give up on humans and trust witches. Oh. Sorry, I shouldn't fool around too much. Bido had tried to joke about it, but the situation seemed to be quite serious, so that even she took the hint and hid her laughter. Is it really that serious? Should we wait just a little longer before beginning the fourth game? Lady Burncastle's guest will be arriving, so it may be best to open the fourth game quickly. However, before at uh, before, perhaps you ought to show a little concern for Battler's feelings, my lady. Concern? Show concern, you say? How should I do that? He's feeling down, so that's right. Should I cheer him up? When a person's heart is dark and closed off, interacting with them in a dark manner gains you nothing. Your only option is to shine with a brightness stronger than the dark. Damn it! Quit messing around! I like this music. Kya! Batlacoon, over here! A croissant baked by Ronave Sama would be wasted on the likes of you. Why don't I enjoy it myself? Battler's stomach involuntarily growled at the fragrant smell of the croissant. His breakfast plate was empty, but Battler hadn't eaten, eaten any of it. The biggest glutton of the Seven Sisters of Purgatory, Beelzebub, had waited for Ranave to leave and had then come to snatch the food away. Battler had noticed, and they'd been really noisy ever since. Even though Beelzebub only had to give it back immediately, whilst throw it into her own mouth right away, she intentionally ran around in circles, making fun of Battler. Give my breakfast back, damn it. If you give it back now, I'll let you off with a single flick to the forehead. But you just try- just you try eating it. He doesn't seem too sort of crouching and hands on these kind of thing. Are you going to eat me up instead? 
If you think you can, just try it. I bet I'll be as sweet as honey pancakes. Gotcha. Right now, I want to eat that bread even more than your thighs. <laughs> be a good girl and give it here. <laughs> so you resist until the end. No way, no way. I won't give it to you. Even the class aren't wants me to eat it. <laughs> Yay, you! Good morning, battler. We still moping so early in the morning. It's the beginning of a new day and a new game, so let's get our spirits up. She flung the door open, like a marathon runner drawn on a certain caramel box. With her hands held high and an idiotic cheeriness, Beto appeared. Caramel box. With marathon. Is marathon? Don't know. <laughs> For some reason, flags from around the world and confetti scattered about, perfectly completing this magnificent entrance. Battler and Beelzebub, who had been fighting over the croissant, completely forgot about their argument, speechless. Yeah. Good morning, Beatrice Sama. I'll just be on my way now. Here, Battler Kun, say ah. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> hey, morning, Beedo. Glad to see you cheery this morning. Beto and Battler looked at each other. It seemed neither had a clue what was going on with the other. Battler? What's going on, Ronovetti? He looks totally fine, doesn't he? He isn't clutching his knees. He's answering. Wait a sec. He was even in the middle of eating. <laughs> no, no. He was sleeping like a baby in his food arm, clutching his knees. I informed him that it was time to wake up. He just wouldn't rise. I tried to feed him, but it seems that a naughty cat wandered in and prevented that. Gah! You checked me! <laughs> you should talk. Weren't you the one who played that massive trick last time? I don't have a clue what's going on. But it looks like you got what you deserved. By the way, Ronovey, nice one. <laughs> Thank you very much, Battle Sama. The two men stuck up their thumbs as though they understood each other, chuckling together. For a while, Beto was very energetic, trying to hide her embarrassment. <laughs> That's quite funny. Don't take me so lightly. Did you really think I'd still be hiding in the corner, holding my knees? Then who's that person crying their eyes out in frustration last time? You could have gathered your tears in a jar and called it face lotion. <laughs> Shut up! That was just because I was a little surprised by a crappy act. It might have looked a little lame, but don't think the same move will work twice. Of course not. And don't disappoint me by falling for the same move over and over again, okay? Hmm. Yeah, just you watch. I'll show you that I'm a guy who gets stronger every time he's beaten down. But Beto? Guess what? Don't do it again. Huh? Why is that? So you really are weak against the rear attack? <laughs> you and I are enemies, and we'll certainly never join forces. I now understand that clearly. So don't you ever try to trick me about that fact again. You say that. But knowing your weaknesses, I'll... Beto thought they were still joking around, but that tone had disappeared from Battler's expression some time ago. Beto felt as though his eyes were like the surface of black tea that had cooled down. You hear me? Don't do it again. I don't get it. I might do it again when you've forgotten, right? Don't do it again. Hmm. Pierced by his strong and forceful gaze, Beto held her tongue. Maybe she was certain the Battler would break that silence with laughter. However, Battler's serious expression didn't change in the slightest. So to break that silence, Beto had no choice but to start laughing herself. <laughs> Very well. You and I are worthy opponents. No matter how friendly our relationship, we'll never be anything more than a pair of enemies. If you have not mistaken this, that's enough for me. That's right. I almost forgot you were my enemy for a second there. I won't embarrass myself like that again. I won't fall for your rear attack again. Never again. It seems I'm not the only one who cannot wait for the fourth game. And please, Battler. Come, take your seat. Yep, just how I like it. Clever little tricks won't work anymore. Stop acting so tough. You remain in a state of surrender for the last mystery in the previous game. The mystery of Nanjo's murder. The answer for that one's still on hold for now. But that doesn't mean that I've lost heart. I'll definitely break your red truth and show that I can deny witches. Hm. A commendable attitude. You truly are a man like a phoenix. Don't betray my expectations. 
With that, let's raise the curtains on the fourth game. But before that, it seems we must welcome a new guest. A guest? You remember as well, correct? That mystery girl who appeared at the very end of the last game without an invitation, ruining my fun. That person. She says she wants to join our game. I sent her an official invitation, inviting her to join this match. Bonnevay, summon our guest. There's no need. I'm already here. The voice that answered Beto's call came from the darkness in a corner of the room. When Battler turned around in surprise, he could now see that mystery girl there. My, my. How rude. <laughs> All you had to do is greet us as soon as you arrived. I don't make a habit of talking to people before punching them. After I punch is a different story though. Oh, what, what would you say? Good night. Have a nice dream. <laughs> How amusing. How truly amusing. Beto cackled and clapped her hands. But that was only Beto, and nothing rose to Battler's face except a bitter smile. You sure are a fighter. Battler and the girl's eyes met, and he shrugged his shoulders as he spoke. But the girl didn't answer, giving only a cold stare in return. You helped me out at the end of the last game. Thanks for that. I don't need your gratitude. You were just slacking off. I only told you to open your eyes. That's so true. Stop slacking off, Battler. <laughs> Beto tried to laugh as though sympathising with her, but it didn't reach the girl's ears. She did absolutely nothing except stare at Battler with ice-cold eyes. Well, looks like someone hates me. I'm just annoyed that you aren't taking this fight seriously. Are you saying I'm not serious about this? Don't tell me that travesty earlier was you being serious. Don't take me for a fool. How long do you intend to play along with a witch's farce like this? I'm fighting Beto in my own way. And doing it seriously, of course. Seriously? Don't make me laugh. You keep on drinking tea and chatting with a witch for all eternity and call that fighting seriously? Keep the jokes to just your hairdo. <laughs> That's because I wasn't used to this witch's game in the beginning, and I've been through a lot of harsh stuff. Still, I'm finally starting to see how to fight, and I'm getting the knack of doing it. If the pathetic way I've been acting makes it look like I haven't been serious to you, you're just wrong. Is that so? Of course, I know I've gotten close in a lot more uh, because I can grab Beto by the collar. But no matter how long that distance may be, it's still finite. And in each game that passes, I'm steadily closing that distance step by step. No matter how long it takes, I close in on that witch. And I've definitely checkmated her. It might take a thousand years, to use her phrase. But even so, I'll definitely win sooner or later. Why? Because I definitely won't accept losing. I definitely won't stop moving forward, closing in on her. In other words, there's just one thing I can say for sure. I'll definitely win against that witch someday. That's how it is. Maybe you don't sound like you're in a hurry. You're even trying to win. Even the finnick can become endless if you treat it the wrong way. By now, you've become an Achilles who couldn't even outstrip a turtle. I get it. So this is why I'm needed. At this rate, there's no way you could win against the endless witch, even after a billion years. Who are you? It's not like you'll be struck by lightning if you just tell me your name. At that point, the girl fell silent, gazing straight into Battler's eyes. At first, Battler faltered under the firmness of that look, and his gaze wavered slightly, but then his eyes gradually began to be sucked into the pupils that were staring at him. Then inside those eyes, he saw a light that, had been, that he'd seen some time before. Battler was struck by how strongly they resembled the eyes of a girl who definitely couldn't be here, even though that was completely impossible. I'm not stupid. But for some reason, it feels true to me. But that can't be right. That person's supposed to still be six years old. You couldn't possibly be Angie, could you? If I were to say, that's right, would you believe me? Hmm. I put it another way. If I said, I'm your ally, so trust me, would you believe it? Would you unconditionally trust some unknown girl you are uh, meeting for the first time just because she looks a little like someone you know? It's because you're such a softy that you got tricked so easily in the last game and cried so bitterly. You said it yourself. That kid is six, right? Do I look like I'm six? If I were to claim that I'm that kid despite that, would you just swallow that story? If you say it like that, it's no way I can argue back. Sorry. That's right, I'm a softy. And that should have been made clear to me after the last game. 
Is that what you meant when you said I wasn't being serious? Yes. You may think you're fighting against a witch, but you're just getting along with her and playing. You're just playing at fighting in a friendly game of chess. That may be a serious contest for you two. But looking at it from far away, I only see you playing around and following the rules like you're good friends. <laughs> That's harsh. But as long as you're unable to win at this game, you won't be released from this place. That's why I came. I came to bring this game to its conclusion. You claim that you're closing in on the witch, but you're just like a hamster running around in a wheel. Oh, one of those. Those things that run around and round in place, night after night. At a glance, you might think that running around in a wheel is endless. The endless witch Beatrice. It's just like you. He thinks he's fighting, but he's actually just running around in a wheel while making a fool of himself. This isn't a game. This is nothing more than a cage to shut him up in for all eternity. Oh. You like him endless to something like a wheel that a mouse plays in? Interesting, interesting. <laughs> Something that's endless in a certain dimension can be less than endless in a higher one. The fact that a, me a, a manga sponge has infinite surface area only matters in a world of less than three dimensions. In the three-dimensional world of reality, it has zero mass. Not only is it on not endless, it doesn't even exist. What an assertive woman. Seems you are worthy of being called my enemy. Who are you? I am your ally, and an enemy of witches. Of course, you don't have to believe it. No one can prove that I really am your ally. On the contrary, it's more desirable that you keep your guard up strongly enough to find me very suspicious. That's right. Last time ended up pretty bad. I've got to be at least that careful. I don't plan on getting tricked twice. Beetle laughed in a truly pleased way, which was humiliating only to Battler. People don't just get tricked out of the blue. That only happens when they fail to check things for themselves and leave it to other people. Saying that you thought the light had turned green just because you saw other people start crossing doesn't count as an excuse for getting into an accident. Get it? Yeah, I get it. You tell me not to swallow information given to me by others, not to think for myself. Uh, but to think for myself. <laughs> In the past, I swallowed all the magic Beto showed me. I stopped thinking. So I was useless. Battler grimaced as he remembered his many painful losses. The witch watched and laughed again, putting on a bold appearance. I'll offer you advice in a way that works to your advantage. Of course, you shouldn't swallow everything I say, because no one can provide certain proof that I'm your ally. In the last game, Virgilia, who I thought was an ally, was actually on the witch's side. Battler couldn't rid his head of that eerie smile worn by Virgilia, a person he'd once even thought of as trustworthy and reliable. So I don't need you to unconditionally trust me. You might as well take my advice as nothing more than an opinion to be considered. After all, the player who's fighting in a game against the witch is you. That's right. Saying I lost because I followed the moves of an outsider would be just too pathetic of an excuse. Oh yes, my opponent's battler. You're nothing more than an outsider. You should bear that in mind. No, I'm not an outsider. With Beatrice and Ashura Maya battler, and I, who gaze down from above, it's almost like a fight in the shape of a triangle. At a glance, it might not look like a united front, but having a united front doesn't necessarily mean fighting together. Hmm. What an odd thing to say. Just now, he described fighting with you as closing the distance. But you can't measure distance with a single eye. Only with two eyes are things visible in three dimensions, and only then can distance be judged. And even when you have two fields of vision, it's pointless if they're in the same place. You can pin down witches more accurately when they're far apart. Shooting from different positions and different angles. So basically, it's crossfire. Interesting. We're shooting from different positions and different angles. So I won't get along with anybody. That's why I'll keep my own position separate and catch a witch in a pincer attack. You okay with this, battler? This girl may actually be an ambush I set up, right? She might just be saying something plausible to gain your trust, right? Maybe. She's been saying that over and over again herself. So of course, I can't blindly accept her advice. But as to whether she's worthy of trust or not, I can think for myself and make a decision. As long as I don't stop thinking for myself, I won't be tricked by anyone again. Hmm. What confidence, assure my battler. After you've said so much, it makes me want to trick you all over again, you see? I can't wait to see what kind of face you'll make when you realise you've been duped once more. How pleasant. <laughs> Looks like you know my name. 
but I don't know yours. Tell me. For a while, the girl remained silent, without changing her expression even once. She looked as though she couldn't decide whether to say her name or not, or possibly as though she was deciding on the name she'd say on the spot. Gretel. Ghetto? You are? That's my name, dumbass. Call me Gretel. And should I call myself Hansel? <laughs> Just kidding. I'm sure am I a battler. Call me battler. Nice to meet you. I hate handshakes. Don't take it personally. Really? Sorry. After all, it isn't certain that you're my ally. And you just told me to keep my guard up too. Battler drew back his right hand, which he had stuck out. His bitter smile disappeared and was replaced with a strong resolve directed at this new fourth game. Battler, think deeply about why you must win against this witch. You can't stop with something abstract like, I'll beat her because I don't like it. I have a deep conviction that you'll definitely defeat the witch and escape from this world. Because there is definitely someone waiting for you to come back. For that kid's sake as well. Maybe there was something she wanted to say. Gretel cl uh, clenched her fists in front of her chest and hung her head in silence. At a loss for words for a short while. As though smashing through that silence, Beto sp spoke up in a forceful voice. Good, that should be enough of an introduction for Gretel or wh whoever. Come, try to remember, what happened on October 4th? Let the curtain open on the fourth game. At the same time, as though it had been blown by a sudden gust of wind, the clock that had been turned back to October 4th, 1986, started to move. While we remained in the witch's tea room, the blue-grey sea and the green Rockingshima spread out beneath us, and we could see a boat heading there, its wake trailing behind it. The sky was already cloudy, and it seemed that the barrier of the typhoon would soon shut the island away. Here comes the storm. There was the boat docked in the harbour, and Goda helping to unload it. Then, once all of its passengers had disembarked, the boat began to separate from the shoreline. The relatives were gradually swallowed up by the island. Ah! Looks like you're as cheery as ever, Maria. Maria-chan, you'll trip if you aren't careful. Look out. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Gonna fall, fall, sink, sink. <laughs> the long-missed cousins I had loved dashed across the beach, getting swallowed by the forest path that led to the mansion and disappeared. And of course, only Chan could be seen among them too. Damn it. Stop right there, Maria. You nimble little brat. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Maria, Oni-chan, whom I'd loved, started dashing, and Oni-chan chased after her. They were swallowed up by the forest. Following them, father and mother were also swallowed up. The rest of the parents were swallowed up. They were swallowed up, leaving only me behind. Dumbass, how long are you going to joke around and play with a witch in a place like this? Come back quickly, Oni-chan. Don't leave me all alone. And realise, realise how cruel and lonely the world I'm isolated in is. Welcome to Rock and Gema, the island you all know and love is an achievement. I can't remember if uh, you can see achievements, kind of thing. Via the recording, I mean. But yeah, we've made it to the midway point. So, this has been Greeny XI. I hope you've enjoyed the start of Arc 4. I'm interested to see how it goes. <laughs> Um, yeah, I can't pause it a sec, but thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again in a bit when we check out Angie's future. See you in a bit, folks.